Hi again, so as part of our focus on EVs, and in particular the Model 3, I'll be doing a series of interviews on particular subjects with people and friends that I know in the hopes that it might answer some of your questions you might have. So the first subject I'm going to cover with this series is about solar energy systems. And the timing seems appropriate given the recent Tesla announcement about their desire to purchase Solar City in the US. So Tesla wants to offer an end-to-end -end solution for renewable energy generation, storage and transportation, ne transportation needs with uh, solar systems, the Tesla Powerwall, and of course their Power Pack, and their line of cars, the Model S, the Model X, and soon the Model 3. So as my first guest, I'd like to welcome Glenn Hewlett. How you doing, Glenn? Hey, Thanks for coming on the show for me today. My pleasure. So um, we'll just make this a little informal. We'll just ask you a few questions and just kind of go with that. So um, Sure. So first, I want to know, you're a Model 3 reservation holder, right? <laughs> That's great. A little late, later than most people. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. When did you order? Uh, I think it was April 4th. Somewhere. Oh, really? Yeah. After the announcement? Yeah. I see. So it's like, I, all these people are ordering a Model 3. It's like, it's out already? Because I, I used to follow Tesla off and on, knowing right. all about, all right, they're pushing the EV stuff. That's great. Yeah. But uh, I didn't know. It was, they were already... Um, releasing the Model 3, or at least the reservations for them, till right. later. And then our, uh, my wife and I had our discussions about it. <laughs> but what made you decide to order a 3? Um, well, I've always loved the idea of electric vehicles. I think it's great for the environment. Of course, I'm big on the environment. It's part of the reason why we have the solar panels in the first place. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, and it's that, and it's a good timing, because my old car is... Two years, it's definitely going to need to be replaced anyways. I and I have an older son who's probably going to use that older car, and then I'll, I'll have the Tesla. Um, but you were aware of the Model S and the Model X? Or yeah. you came in late to that? No, no. I was Even when they first did the Roadster, I was aware of what they were doing, but yeah. I didn't know they advanced so quickly oh, really? into getting Because I knew it was their big plan to get right. to the Model 3 from the get-go. Mm -hmm. I remember Elon talking about that, but... I I wasn't following them that closely. You know, it's just from the odd little news bit I pick up here and there. And I, I, I remember seeing the Model X, um, the the reveal for that, or right. whatever they call it, when Elon was showing everybody how the Falcon wings open yeah, and everything sure. like that. So. Sure. So, so, so was there anything in particular about the Model 3 that really intrigued you? Was it just because it was smaller than a Model S, or was it the price? Price. The price. Big difference. Yeah, that yeah. seems to be the big thing with most people. <laughs> yeah, it's always the price. Yeah, it's the EV thing for sure. Yeah. You know, not even having to go to a gas station ever again. Yeah, I know, I know. And uh, just knowing that it's better for the environment, and yeah, it's the price has finally come down to yeah. a, a realistic price for me anyway. Yeah, so you feel good about the car? Oh yeah, yeah. Everything I hear about it's you know great. So, so considering their accelerated production plans, you think they're going to make it on time? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> watching your gets... videos is giving me a little more confidence because right. I I know from watching well a lot of Tesla videos I've yeah. been catching up on now. Sure. Um, you know if they were talking about the history of the Model S being you know such a supercar but hard to um, manufacture. Yeah. And then you know Model X. Is even harder to to uh, yeah that was to manufacture that was an exercise but for sure at least you know from the get go with the Model Three they've taken into the manufacturing thing from the get go so I'm hoping you know that Elon will get everything going in time cool <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your sol your solar panel installation what what prompted you to uh, to to get into the solar thing well again I like the idea of uh, of something that's good for the environment again and. Um, um, my wife and I have been looking at uh, solar panels for quite a few years, and um, maybe three years ago, I got really seriously interested, and I looked at the economics of it, and it was looking, at that time, it was, yeah, it was pretty good. You know, the idea was that in um, 10 or so years, it would pay for itself, so I said, okay, well, that's not bad. Um, but, and then I, I, re I reached out to one solar company. I can't remember what it was anymore. Um, but they never got back to me. So it's like, I put it on the back burner right. and I didn't pursue it too much, but were there permits installed for this uh, uh, requirements for this? There are, are some permits yeah. and requirements, but soul smart, they took care, they of, took all care of all of that. Them. They, it, it was an option. They can, you can let them do it all, or you can be totally involved, get all the stuff done yourself through the government and, and all the stuff. But I figured out. Nah, 
these guys know what they're doing. They know the their connections in sure. the in the government and stuff because the way it works with um, in Ontario, anyways, there's um, a project where or an incentive, I guess it's called. Yes. Um, where we get paid when we pr um, produce power to the grid. So you get locked in, like we're locked in for 20 years at 39 cents per kilowatt hour right now. Okay. Um, I've heard, heard from other people who've had it for like 10 years in Ontario and they, they've got like 70 cents per kilowatt hour, but the solar panels themselves that they bought cost a lot more back then. It's too. all relative. So yeah, it's, it's, it is relative. So, um, so yeah, so every kilowatt hour I, I produce, I'm not storing it in batteries or anything. It just goes right back out to the grid. Okay. And so, so you're not consuming it, you're that. actually exactly. putting it into the grid. Yeah. I see. I'm sure some of it works its way back to me. Okay. So it, it's beneficial in that way because I get paid 39 cents per kilowatt hour, no matter what mm -hmm. it goes out to the grid. And when I take it back in, you know, um, it's. It's going to be. I can't remember how much our electricity is right now, but I think after hours between seven p.m. and seven a.m. in this area, especially with power stream, is just over eight cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah, I don't, you know, it sounds of course about it right. Changes, and but that's the low peak. I think it's around fourteen in the middle of the day. The, yes, the high it sounds time. about right. Somewhere around that. Okay, yeah. so that's probably around when I'm producing the most, anyways. Okay, because that's the uh, um, hottest part of the day. Well, most sun in the day. Yeah. So did you buy or lease the system? I bought it outright. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you give us a rough idea of what the system might have cost for your system? You said it was what, five kilowatt or just over five kilowatts? Just over five. I think it's 5.1 kilowatts. Okay. I think with taxes, the the um, squirrel guard, it was 20, 23,000, I think. Like 23,000 and yeah. change. Okay. And, and, you, and your payback time will be approximately what you think? They said around nine, ten years. But I've had it installed and working for about a year so far, mm -hmm. and the calculations I got based on that is probably going to be more like eleven years. Okay. Unless last year was just not as much sun, more clouds. Over right, because we didn't have as much snow this year as we typically would. Yeah. So, so you think that might have contributed to a little higher? That that might be a return. good thing that we didn't get so much snow. I don't know. Climate change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. It's going to be somewhere around there. I would say anywhere between nine to eleven years, and then it'll pay for itself. Right. So then, after the like I say, it's guaranteed for twenty years that that um, uh, thirty-nine cents per kilowatt hour that I that I produce. So that's guaranteed for the next twenty years, well, nineteen years now. Right. And then after that, um, I'm not sure what I'll be doing with my solar panels. Maybe I'll get a Tesla battery hooked up to it in my garage. I'm not right. sure. But, uh, and the warranty on the system, would it, did they warrant the whole system for a certain amount of time? Uh, the solar panels themselves are warrantied for 25 years, I believe. Okay. The inverters, the one that turns the DC into AC power, yeah. that's only 10 years. I see. But there's no moving parts in that, so I'm hearing good things, like it shouldn't it shouldn't have any problems. Right. Solid anyway. state's just one of those things. Yeah. Okay, cool. So your thoughts about... Tesla buying Solar City, do you think it makes sense from a financial aspect or product aspect or both? I, Have you given it any is it, is it good that Tesla did it? Is that what you're Well, asking? they're considering it. It's, yeah, it's, it's on the they, table at this point. It has to be voted upon on the uh, from the board of directors. But do you think it, it makes sense or do you think I it's do. a distraction? Or? No. Well, I hope it's not a distraction. But, right. you know, Elon's already running two companies. And I think the third one... It's kind of like they're just amalgamating it into the exist. Like it's not like he's going to go and change the way they run their business. They're, they're I think it's just they're, they're tying it all together so that they have, you know, end-to-end -end solution for the electric vehicle, and then right. they can say, hey, you're you're off the grid, completely. Your solar panels charging your car, so you're zero impact on the environment. So right. I think it's a really good thing for them. I see. Like, but I, like I say, just hope it doesn't impact the Model 3 delivery date. That's <laughs> I all. think that's everybody's goal at this point is making sure that it doesn't affect, you know, the Model 3 plans yeah. at this point. So it remains to be seen. You know, I mean, we've still got, uh, you know, a few more months or at least another year at this point. You know, July 1st of this year coincided with the one-year anniversary, the cutoff date for next year, apparently, for the suppliers. Oh, Remember right. you mentioned that. That's right. So, you know, if things work out, we're looking at potentially... A year from now, you know, just under a year from now, because it is the what is it, the fifth of June now? Yeah, if they or go July, back. I should say, uh, that uh, we could start to see first parts off the production line. So we'll that would see. be 
awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Hopefully. Okay, great. Well, I think that concludes our interview for today. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them at the end of the video in the comments section on the bottom. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Model 3 Owners and consider joining our forum at Model3OwnersClub.com. And don't forget to subscribe to YouTube because you won't know about new episodes unless you subscribe. So thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon. So, the solar panels on the roof. Okay. Um, some on the garage and some on the higher roof over there. Okay. How big is your... Um it's What's a five the, kilowatt. Five kilowatt? Okay. So, all the solar panels, the uh, power from the panels themselves all come into this inverter. Okay, and the inverter does what? It converts the power from DC to AC. To AC, because the AC is what's in the grid. Right. Right? Okay, so it has to convert the energy in. Yeah, so with my particular setup, I'm not charging anything else. I'm I'm giving um, AC power back to the, my neighborhood. So you're not consuming the energy or storing it, you're just feeding right. straight into the grid? Some of it will go into my house. I right? see. So from here we got AC, mm -hmm. comes out through to this wire. And we have a big switch there. Okay, so it's a separate, and so you have a separate meter into yeah. the grid? So this is my meter that measures how much power I give our electric company, which is called PowerStream. Okay. And that, this way we can monitor how much I give them. And um, the way it's set up for me, I get paid from, for my solar pa um, power by PowerStream okay. themselves. So this is measured by PowerStream and based on how much power I give them, they give me, uh, right now, well, I'm, I have a signed contract. It's 39 cents per kilowatt hour I see. that I give them for power, so. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this is coming into the grid here, and this is the existing power one for my house. So Correct. This measures how much I use mm -hmm. from from the grid. So basically, the power comes there, AC comes into the house, and then whatever I don't use goes back to the grid for the rest of the neighborhood. Any kind of snow buildup or anything like that? That's been a problem. Well, this this because obviously it's not a problem. So awesome. we didn't have much. Snow well, I know we didn't. Year, so right. Because um, well, that's a question I'm sure the viewers will have. Yeah, is, the higher roof there is on a very yes, steep Yes, I see angle. it's this very steep pitch there. Well, that I'm sure didn't have any problems. But when I was looking out my window there, I could see some snow was built up the odd day on the garage um, solar panel. But they're not heated in any way to prevent the snow buildup. It's just natural no, gravity takes care of yeah. it. Yeah. I see. But, you know, you could get out there and clean it if you wanted, if it built up enough. But, you know, it wasn't bad this year at all anyways. Hmm. But I don't think it'd be a problem. And uh, actually, with the snow on it, you still get um, some power. I see. So it's it doesn't block off the uh, UV rays from the sun. Well, photons are photons, right? It's yeah. just the intensity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a shot of some of the panels on the roof. Have you had any uh, complaints or issues with the neighbors about this? Curiosity? More curiosity than anything. I see. Nobody complaining, oh, it's ugly. No. <laughs> Nobody seems to care about that. So. That's good, because that's always a concern. You know, I talk to a lot of people sometimes, and they always say, oh, I don't like solar panels because they're so ugly, this and that, the other thing. But the one thing I've noticed with a lot more of the latest installations is that they seem to have, the hardware is dark. It's more like anodized aluminum. It's black or really a dark gray. Yeah. It tends to blend in more with the panels. I think most people are getting... Um, the idea that they're ugly because you know some of the solar panel like the hardware is a contrasting colors like the you know the normal uh, aluminum color right and I think that's where the the ugliness factor comes in I think yeah it's interesting because Elon did mention um, you know in the conference call about the purchase of solar city that they were looking at aesthetics too that was yeah he was saying that maybe down the road their new solar panels will look better than a normal roof <laughs> well, you know, if you put it in his hands, I'm sure it'll look good because, you know, the, the, the you know, that aesthetics like matter. Yeah, that's true. That's cool. Okay, cool.